Alright my friends, welcome to February. I'm here today to talk about the things that I read in January, last month. I'm going to try and move pretty quickly today. We'll see. These usually end up being really long videos that I have to edit down significantly. The first book I read in the month of January was Lighter Than My Shadow by Kate Green. This is a graphic novel. So I just wanted to make sure that I opened to an appropriate page. Technically this is a YA graphic novel, but I want to give a warning that this is very graphic. Did I say a graphic novel? I meant a graphic memoir. It's an account of Kate's struggle with anorexia during mostly her teenage and early 20s. And like I said, it's, it's pretty graphic and it deals with some very, very difficult events that occurred in her life, including a sexual assault. If you are not comfortable reading books that deal with really difficult subject matter, then this book is not for you. I'm sorry, I keep having to set it down because it's really heavy. I really appreciated this book. I think that body image and our relationship with food is an interesting discussion and it's something that I've dealt with in my life. I've never been anorexic, but I have I have, I have struggled with my relationship with food and my relationship with how I view my body. So I appreciate reading accounts like this. I'm just not sure that the graphic novel or graphic memoir is my favorite way to read a book. So I gave this a three out of five stars. It's definitely worth it if you're interested, but like I said, just know that there's some very graphic content and because it's a graphic novel, it's described in pictures, not in words. So in that respect, it really paints an image in your head of exactly what happened and what she's going through. Next, I finished up Robin Hobb's Live Ship Traders trilogy. The last book in the series is called Ship of Destiny. I loved this series. I included it in my favorites of the year, even though I finished this book in January. I felt like Robin Hobb is so good at creating characters, and if you were a little put off by the Farseer trilogy in terms of plot, I will say that while all of Robin Hobb's books are character driven, the Live Ship Traders trilogy is a lot more plot heavy than the Farseer trilogy, for example. I haven't read any further, so I don't know how to compare them to the later books in the world, but I loved these books, and I am so sad to say goodbye to these characters. I'm hoping maybe we'll meet a few of them again in the Rain Wilds Chronicles. The other thing that I think that Robin Hobb does so beautifully is take problems and injustices in our own world and put them in a fantasy setting. Doing that kind of helps the reader to think about these issues in new and creative ways that they may not have before or or even accept these as issues. She deals particularly in this series a lot with things like sexism, slavery, um, the powerful versus the powerless and that dynamic. I will also say that these are very adult and there were some very graphic scenes in this as well. This book is a little more graphic than the first two and there were some um, very disturbing scenes in this book in particular. However, it was an incredible story with wonderful fleshed out characters. I can't sing the praises of this trilogy enough and this was an amazing conclusion to the series. Then I picked up The Snow Child by A1 Ivy. This tells the story of a couple living in Alaska at the turn of the 20th century. They are homesteaders up there and they moved from the East Coast partly because they were struggling with the fact that they could not have children and they thought that a move would help them but of course the Alaskan wilderness at the time is incredibly barren. Their marriage is falling apart and one night in a moment of levity they build a snow child together. The next day the snow child has disappeared, but in its place they begin to discover this little girl who seems to be living in the woods on her own. And the story kind of takes off from there, and kind of how this child flits in and out of their lives. I was captivated by the stark, brutal depictions of the lonely life that people led in the Alaskan wilderness, especially at the time. The barren setting of the Alaskan wilderness perfectly mirrored the desolate, lonely marriage between Jack and Mabel. Because of course moving to a new place didn't solve their problems. In fact, their lonely marriage was made even 
more profoundly lonely because of the lonely environment that they lived in. I ached for their broken selves, their broken marriage, and their broken dreams of having a family of their own. But despite this sort of, but despite this sort of heavy, lonely setting, there are moments of levity and cheer and deep love, both between Jack and Mabel, and their love for this little girl who they named Thana or Faina, and then also the friendship that develops between Jack and Mabel and their neighbors. The friendship that develops between these two households brings some much needed warmth into the story. The atmosphere in the book is mysterious and a little bit magical. I found it absolutely perfect for the story being told. Faina, the snow child, remains pretty mysterious throughout the book and kind of aloof, and so you don't come to love her as much as you come to love the other characters. However, I didn't find that to be a detriment because your love for Jack and Mabel propels you to loving Faina, this child that they love so much. I did have a fairly significant complaint towards the end of the book, and I understand why this might not bother some people, but it did bother me. And I'm going to try and explain it without giving any spoilers. At one point in the book, some of the kind of ethereal nature of Faina disappears. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of explanation for that, and I didn't like it. I didn't like that that was the direction that they took. I didn't like that some of the things we'd come to know and understand about the nature of who Faina was kind of just went away without any explanation. It didn't make sense to me. It didn't hold together the way I thought that the story should hold together. And when the mystery was introduced again at the end, that felt a little jarring because it was like there was this whole section where that disappeared. Overall though, I loved it. I thought it was well worth reading and I highly recommend it. It was a great book to read in the month of January because January was so cold here in Wisconsin and obviously this book was very cold. It takes place in the Alaskan winters mostly. So I loved it apart from that complaint that I had towards the end. Next I read The Brutal Telling by Louise Penny. This is the fifth book in her Armand Gamache mystery series. And because of that, because it's the fifth book in a series, I don't feel like I can say a whole lot. Of course the mysteries in each one of these books stand on their own, however the mystery in this book does involve characters that we've met previously in Three Pines, and because of that, I don't feel like I can say a whole lot. What I can say about this book and about Louise Penny's writing is that with every book, layers of these characters that we've gotten to know have been shed and we understand more about the nature of who they are. And it's not always a pretty picture, but it is certainly a human picture. And I think that Louise Penny does that with so much finesse because even as these layers are being revealed, it doesn't feel like we're learning something that is out of left field. It still feels like it's a part of the character that we knew, we just didn't know um, where that characteristic that we learned previously would take this character. And in that respect, I think that Louise Penny's writing is beautiful. She writes about the motivations behind people and their actions in a way that is so truthful to what it means to be a human. We are made up of good parts and bad parts. All of us have things in our nature that are not very pretty. I might even say that every one of us has little pieces to ourselves that are kind of ugly, and yet we are also filled with beautiful parts to ourselves as well. And that is what we see in this book. And of course, like I've already said before, I love Inspector Gamache. I think that he is such a wonderful character, partly because he's not hardened. He does look for the goodness in people, even the people that he's investigating. A lot of people say that the fourth book in the series is where Louise Penny finds her footing, but that is not the case for me. I really liked the fourth book, but this book I found to be above and beyond that one. I can see where this series is going to go because of this book, and I can't wait. Finally, I read a YA book called Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. I believe Robin Benway wrote another book that I have on my Kindle called Emmy and Oliver that I heard really good things about. This one came out last year. It was a National Book Award finalist and I had heard nothing but amazing things about this book. So I went into it with huge expectations and I really kind of set myself up for disappointment because of that. I liked this book. 
I did not love it. It follows three siblings, all of whom have either been adopted or have been raised in the foster care system. We learn about each of their stories from their perspectives. So we're getting three points of view in this book. One of the points of view I loved, and I really liked another one of the points of view. I really disliked a third point of view that we got. And because of that, that really brought the book down in my estimation. The point of view that I really didn't like was from a character who I found to be just really annoying and overly dramatic. I just have never jived with characters, teenage characters especially, who are really angsty. I don't understand that angst, especially if it's misplaced. I mean, angstiness in general is fine if I can understand why they're angsty, if I really get it, but I didn't really get this character's angst. It was not believable at all for me, and so I, every time I would read her section, I just found myself rolling my eyes, like, almost the whole time. It was just really annoying, it took me out of the story, and I didn't like it but I loved the other two characters. It was kind of a mixed bag for me in that respect. I really liked it. I liked the overall story being told. It's about adoption and family, and those things are close to my heart. I really liked a lot of the book, but that one aspect of the book really, really brought it down for me. So I think it was like probably a three out of five stars overall. Those are all the books that I read in the month of January. I'm very excited for the books that I have planned in February. And I didn't get to a couple books that I had planned to read in January, which such is life, right? I read five books in the month. One of them was a graphic novel, so it moved really fast. But another one of the books was like 900 pages. So, you know, it was a good month. I hope that you are all having a great beginning to the month. Tell me how your January went. Were you disappointed by the books you read in January? Were you enthralled by the books you read in January? I'd love to know whether January was a good setup to the year for you. I will talk to you all later. Have a great February. Yes. Bye. Let's do this first. Let's do this first. Take a thumbnail first.